story this morning is uh, the new managing director of ESCOM Uganda Limited, uh, Madam Toza Magangi. I got the name right. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Joel. You've been at uh, ESCOM Uganda for not too long now. How many months, Rick? Uh, it's four and a half months. Four and a half months. <coughs> What's it like? You have been in South Africa, ESCOM South Africa, for 14 years. Yes. And uh, you're now here in Uganda. I'm here for Uganda currently with a contract of three years. Mm. Yes. So four and a half months. What's yeah. What do you find the energy industry to be like? Here in this country, we're always quibbling about more power. You know, we will throw stones at uh, whoever has uh, anything to do with the energy, even when it's not their responsibility. But uh, what are you finding this industry like here? Uh, what I see in Uganda is a great opportunity for electricity industry within the energy space. And also what I see is that there is also a huge opportunity to grow the industry within Uganda and uh, ensure that the economy grows mm. in, in Uganda. There's a huge opportunity from the energy perspective. Okay, so when you operate, you have capacity for what? 380 megawatts? Yes. But uh, you are blowing out about 140? Yeah, on average. On average. Uh, do you have plans to grow that now that you come in as new manager? We currently uh, did a capacity test in June with the uh, lake levels that were growing up just to test how much more can we put into the grid. Uh, where through the test is that we can still uh, do more than 145 or that depending as well on the water license that we have because currently we're allowed to use 800 cubic meters of water. So if we can get more water, I think we can still put some more mm. megawatts. In my preamble, I talked about the issues that um, did happen just before you came into office. Uh, here in Uganda, of course, our parliament was saying these guys are incompetent, they're not doing a good job, you know, they're not sticking to their contract, etc., etc. and they recommended that you be thrown out. And uh, that has not entirely gone away, even though, of course, government is not good to that. How are you managing that? Uh, is it still a crisis by the time you took over? So far, I haven't interacted and found it was a crisis. We're currently interacting with our stakeholders, understanding what their expectation is and what more can we do to, to meet their expectations. So for the time I've been here, I have not uh, inter uh, got that that we need to be chased off out mm. of Uganda. When you look at the Ugandan market, um, your clients, we, mm. you know, the consumers of electricity, do you think, because you see, much of the time, um, energy producers will tell you that, look, we have capacity to actually do a lot more, but consumption out there is, is still niggardly. It's not as we would want it. Electricity in this country distribution is to the tune of about 20% countrywide, the last I checked. That means we still have a gap. Where do you see the challenge? Uh, do you agree with your colleagues you know, in this industry that will say, look, for us, we have capacity to actually churn out a lot more energy, but there's no people to consume it, especially because they cannot afford it or some kind of reason? Yes, uh, what, uh, when I looked in through the current uh, uh, demand for, for electricity in Uganda, I found that we're about 15% people uh, that access to electricity. I think there's still a huge potential to get more customers into and also get the large power industries into Uganda that can consume more electricity. So how, how do you plan to do that? Because if only 15% are consuming electricity and yet you would say have capacity to actually churn out a lot more if there was consumption out there. So mm -hmm. what's your plan? Do you hope to I don't know, make it cheaper, that might not be your call really to make alone, but uh, well, what do you plan to do? This, this is uh, the real crisis if you ask me, 15% only of the country can consume electricity in the 21st century. I think uh, from ESCOM side, mostly we're more on the operating uh, on the generation side. And we have other players in the supply chain, which is the UETCL and also UMEME from the distribution side. But I think as the energy sector, if we can come together, I know there is a forum that, uh, that has already been formed, which is IGADAW, of the energy uh, distributors and generators, is to try and find and stimulate the market so that we have more investments coming to Uganda, uh, so that our electricity can be consumed. So using that channel, we can still, uh, as an energy industry, make use of how do we sell Uganda to the, to, to the pow large power users. And also, how do we also extend the electricity to the households to get more people connected to the grid? And I think that forum can play a very instrumental role in making sure there's more demand for electricity. You talk about the other players in the market, mm -hmm. UMEME, UETCL, mm -hmm. and the others, yourselves inclusive on the production end. 
at some point when especially Dan from you know plant from the citizen you were appointed at the energy sector and all those that are involved <laughs> you could hear a bit of quibbling you know everyone taking salvos uh, when they're saying but these guys are not producing enough when they do we take it expensively that's why we sell it to you expensively and, and so on how are you working around the clock to make sure that uh, you are on the same page because you see ultimately as a consumer what i want is power mm -hmm. you know at uh, a rate that i can afford the issues between uh, escom uganda uepcl umeme and all the other players and you know era and so on not a big deal for me what i want is power Yes, what we want is power. I think that forum as well, the IGADAW, will play in educating and trying to, uh, for consumers to understand the whole value chain and where the costs are incurred and where the costs are we try to optimize from the generation and from the distribution side. We, they, I think what is required is to get information and facts out there to the market so that we understand really what are the costs contributors to your electricity and also how do we uh, help you as an end consumer to manage your electricity efficiently and make sure that you lower your uh, electricity bill because we that has been tested in terms of the demand side management how can you manage your your electricity and, and make sure that your household you use your electricity as efficiently as possible which will come in into your pocket in what you pay for electricity your headquarters in South Africa, uh, not too long ago, there were a number of quandaries which have really not been resolved uh, well to date. Management, uh, supply in South Africa and so on. And some sections in this country were worried, they're thinking, wait a minute, if there are challenges at headquarters, mm. how does that not have a ripple effect here? Currently we're a subsidiary of ESCOM Enterprises. We have uh, separate uh, operators in Uganda with a different board. Yes, South Africa had some challenges. And uh, just to put you on life, it's just on the 30th of August, the first unit of Medupi, which is one of the new constructor station, was commissioned, which will bring to the grid about 790 megawatts. So which also alleviates on the shortage of electricity in, uh, in South Africa. And beyond that, in South Africa, we have taken a very massive uh, campaign in actually managing the demand and supply by making sure that we have uh, an integrated system and also how do we educate and make sure our large power producers use their electricity uh, efficiently and also managing the peak because what we found that the challenge was within the peak hour from five o'clock to seven o'clock, nine o'clock at night, where all the consumers are going home and use a lot much electricity so the demand cannot meet the supply. Then how do we then level that peak and take uh, making sure that our stakeholders understand and they're taken through so that we level out that peak and also assist you as an end user because you will find that electricity is m much more expensive during the peak hour. So how do we flatten that and make you also to ensure that your what you pay for electricity is less by making, uh, uh, making use of electricity outside the peak period? So yes, South Africa has went through a, a challenge, but they are recovering. And uh, most of the uh, stations that were overdue from a, a, a the, the backlog of maintenance, they have to catch up with that. And it's f from the past month, there hasn't been any load shedding that was happening in South Africa. So from what we have learned in South Africa, that I, it's, not, it's not happening in Uganda. We are available, we are reliable as, as, a co as a com ESCOM Uganda, providing electricity to the nation. Earlier you adumbrated some of the ways we can mm. increase power supply in this country and you talked about you know, availability of more water and, mm. and so on. And uh, it can be a catch-22 because you see, to have you know, a lot more power supplied out there, we have got to, in a way, operate deleteriously to the environment. You've had environmentalists say that, look, now you're creating another dam, that means you know, you're cutting off water supply, then tourism and so on. And, and why I call it a catch-22 is because you know, there are benefits on either side and so one has got to weigh. Do you have in place more dams or do you want to have more water pools in place so that tourists do come in and all these other things that are involved? How do you think this rabbit, if you like, uh, can and should be addressed? Because I'm sure you see it with government, you want to produce a lot more energy, but uh, there are needs, you have demand, you say, look, for us to be able to produce a lot more, this is what we need. And yet, uh, as you say, this is what we need in terms of water supply, et cetera, et cetera. Environmentalists will say that, look, no, that's not good for us. While we produce electricity, we need to take cognizance of the environment where we're operating. Like if we look at where we are, Nalubar and Chira, we're in a very sensitive environmental 
uh, area catchment. So although we generate electricity, we cannot put a blind eye on the environmental uh, responsibilities that we have to ensure that we generate our electricity in a most friendly environmental. So we have engagements with the Department of uh, Water and we make sure that even with our operations, we do not tamper with the water resources. We don't uh, pollute the, the area. So w w w yes, as you say, it's a, it's a quick 22, but as a prudent operator and a responsible citizen, we must make sure we take care of our environment. All right, so you have a three-year contract. Um, what, what would your prognosis be? Three years down the road, what do you hope to have achieved in terms of uh, maybe supply, in terms of you know, building institutions. I know that uh, your predecessor did quite a bit in putting, in terms of putting structures that will operate and so on. Mm -hmm. What would you hope to put in place to build? Uh, my vision for the three years is that ESCOM be the operator of choice. That when we look at an operator in the future, we think of ESCOM. By making sure that we run that plant technically sustainable, we, our bottom, our finances are sustainable, we are becoming an employer of choice, and we are compliant to all our agreements and, our reg and the, regulati uh, uh, the regulations of this country. So that is what I would like to achieve and make sure that if we want to benchmark in Uganda on hydropower operations, we think of ESCOM. That's interesting. Um, I'm hoping that will be the case. Look, uh, one of the challenges I think uh, that uh, many a foreign company, will, which eventually becomes localized, like yours in this case, is that um, there's normally an information gap. Uh, mm. Things are improving. You have this man, uh, Simon Kasiato, that talks about ESCOM every morning. We keep restraining him, you know. Uh, and, and, you know, th that means some light has been shed. But sometimes I think that um, even though we might at times legitimately throw stones at you, sometimes it's because maybe you... Uh, there's a, there's a bit of a paucity in terms of letting people know, all right, this is our mandate. You know, we mm. are only generators of power. We only generate what we have been tasked to generate and that kind of thing. And, and that means there's a detachment with, with the, the person locally, you know. Mm. So if they don't have power, they will think uh, it could be Umeme. Umeme would say, no, it is these guys that generate power. And then you say, so you're the ones generating power. Why don't I have, have power in my home? You know, so there's, there's a bit of that lab. Yes, I agree with you on that, and that is an area of improvement, that as ESCOM, as the energy sector, we educate the public in terms from, a, from the power generation, the challenges that we faced in an energy sector, and also to use also, we can also use our media to, 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 to train and uh, educate and have articles around the power so that everyone understand what is happening in the energy sector. I agree there is a, been a, a gap on that side where that we need to improve on. So as also one of the objectives when IGADA was formed was ac actually that, to make sure we bridge that information gap and give the public the, the, the information that they require and they need to understand what of the challenges and the opportunities that are there in the, in the, power, in the power energy sector. So looking at the 15% of mm. um, power distribution that we have in this country, I'm sure, like myself, you'd want to see 100%. Let's be practical here. How, how do we make this happen? I know it's not going to happen in a year, probably not even five, but we want to begin to see progress, you know, say in the next five years at least. I don't know whether saying we should have covered 50% is uh, too Herculean a task, but what practical steps do you think we need to begin to take as a country? I think the country has articulated very clearly in their vision 2040 around the energy needs of this country and getting more people have access to electricity. And that I think it, it's a, the government is very clear on what it wants to achieve. And one of the critical things that we have done in South Africa after the independence in 1994, because it was also one of the challenges that to get to more people access to the grid was to was ESCOM being the state-owned en en enterprises in South Africa tasked of getting people to the grid and having milestones of each and every year of how many people they connect to the grid. And I think if that robust, I think with the Rural Electrification Agency, there are proper targets that they have been given for them to be able to get more people into the grid. So the more we connect people, get industries on board, we increase our, our demand for electricity. 
which culminates of getting uh, getting to the aspiration of the 42,000 megawatts that needed in 2040 for this country. Uganda is a highly politicized uh, society, mm. and uh, especially when it's election time, mm. the heat is a lot, a lot more. And um, we, we have so many political demagogues, if you like. And uh, what I mean here is, when it's election time, politicians will uh, hound and puff everybody that they think has a say in this, I want power in my area. I promise these people power. And uh, you know now they are telling you, look, if you want another of our term of office through our votes, then you should make sure that you fulfill this. And um, our friends in the energy sector that keep saying, look, these politicians keep putting unreasonable, exotic demands on us. They always, always bother us, especially around this time. And I'm thinking, maybe you're facing the same pressure. How are you handling this? Uh, currently, because I'm in the generation space, and I don't, we don't interact at the face value with the energy user, which is yourself, we, we're not getting that much of a challenge because what uh, most of what we do we need to we just provide electricity to the transporting company which is made still and to the distributor that has the the contact with the customer so from us we have not yet um, uh, faced those challenges of getting politicians to come let's electrify this uh, this uh, area for election purposes what kind of relationship do you have with, uh, you're not the only power generators, you might be one of the biggest, uh, the biggest, I think. Yes. But there's a plethora of others. Uh, I would imagine that uh, you probably put your heads together, or is this a competition? Uh, I've got to stand out, I've got to knock you out of business. Because ultimately, you know, I imagine you want to serve Uganda, and uh, so you put your heads together with whoever is doing what you're doing. Let's see how we improve this. Uh, so far, as I'm still interacting with my stakeholders. Uh, meeting some of the, my counterparts in the generation industry is things that we will definitely discuss in terms of how do we come together and make an impact in Uganda. Yeah, interesting. I hope that happens too soon. There are days, and uh, in countries elsewhere, this is normally done because we know that uh, to supply electricity as, as well as we would want it, there is an effect. Well, you can try and minimize it, but, but there's an effect, you know, generally on the environment, you've had these global warming things, etc., etc. And so what some countries do, they say we'll have a day where all lights are put out or for an hour or, or that kind of thing. You know, I'm sure it's in your interest too because you want to supply electricity, but, but you want to, you know, conserve the environment too. You want to be sure because you see, it's just like when you keep using your car, it's important that you service it. Mm. It's important that you refuel it and that kind of thing. That, that is when it's able to do a lot more work for you. So do you have any plan around that? Either the SCOM or together with the other generators? The advantage with uh, Uganda is that most of its electric generation is, uh, is renewable, it's, uh, which is far much better than what is in South Africa where we generate most of our electricity through coal. So which coal way it's mostly from what we emit through our flow gases to the, has an impact on the environment. From, from Uganda's side, because it's a renewable energy, it's much cleaner than the coal-fired power station. So uh, as you rightfully say, like in South Africa, we do have the, the one hour uh, per year that we took where we asked everyone to switch off their electricity just to for an hour, which was the 49 million project that we normally run. So for, for Uganda, it's something that can be explored, but for Uganda, is the advantage is that it's renewable. It's not that very uh, environmentally detrimental as compared to, to South Africa, where we use coal. Yes, from the water side, we need to, as we indicated earlier, we need to manage our environment because we are in very sensitive ecosystems. So it's things that we can think of and see if they will, will have an impact in Uganda because the, the the forms of generation are different, and the impacts are also different. The major one, of course, like you say, is hydro here mm. in Uganda, which you are doing, but uh, we are trying to explore the others. You mm. know, there's thermal, there's uh, all these others. You talk about coal, there's the bio and, mm. and that kind of thing. I would think that maybe our focus has been greatly on hydro because we have this water available, mm. even though we have these other resources, you know, that, that would help. So I'm yes. thinking maybe if that is done, that would lessen your work because sometimes you're thinking, Maybe the pressure is, we, we, we are inundated with this pressure that we cannot handle. If we had uh, the thermal going real good, bio, and, and so on, that would lend a hand to you. 
uh, what, what, what kind of direction are you giving to government if at all to see that these two get utilized, that we do not, you know, mm. majorly concentrate on hydro. It's easy, it's available for us, but uh, it's important that we explore the other avenues too. Yes, it is important to, to understand your energy mix in terms of what type of other forms of energy. But I would say also from a thermal side, I think technology has advanced a lot, especially from an environmental uh, management perspective. Uh, coal, which are mostly uh, very uh, worked on it for quite a long time, you, you will find that in the current two stations that are coming on board in South Africa, we have introduced new technology, which is called flow gas desulfurization plants. And what those technologies do, do is to take out the sulfur dioxide out of the flue gas. So if I look at, an, if even if we go for an energy mix and have other, uh, other forms of energy, uh, we, we need to understand the environmental impacts and also what, I what technology out there to manage those environmental impacts. And technology has, has greatly improved over the years uh, also for thermal uh, energy in terms of managing our environment. All right, uh, we need to wrap this up, but uh, maybe finally, if you, I don't know how often you meet with government especially, because uh, sometimes I think that um, our government officials, either it's lack of information or it's their demagogic tendencies politically, but uh, sometimes I think maybe they need to hear from the experts, you know about running this industry, what's available, what's not, because they make promises that uh, clearly cannot be fulfilled. What kind of engagement do you have and uh, to what extent do you give technical advice and uh, how, how do you plan on upping that some more? I know that's not your job description, but it's important, you're a player in this. Yeah, it, it is important that we have for more interactions with the government and also to illustrate what we're doing and what type of opportunities are, are there. It's one of my key focus areas on terms, how do we step out our stakeholder management engagements and so that our stakeholders are on board, they understand what we're doing. So I'm planning to have more interactions with government, more interaction with our asset owner, more interaction with the regulator, so that we are all on the same page. Toza Mankwangi, Managing Director, ESCOM mm. Uganda. Pleasure. Thanks so much for talking to us Thanks this morning. Thanks so much, Joel. Coming up is my opinion. I find that ridiculous in this day and age, we need to do everything that we can to make sure that everybody in this country has access to power. And of course that calls for a lot more, even those clamoring for power, we need to be sure we are ready to pay for this power. I mean, it comes at a cost. But what steps are in place to make sure this happens? I, I think it's concerted efforts. You know, government, the generators, the distributors, everybody <coughs> needs to come on board to see that this gets to happen. And for politicians, and you know areas where, you know, when it's about a by-election or electoral time, politicians will make sure that their polls that will just be put on the ground there, and you're sending a signal to these people that if you vote wisely, these polls will go up and you'll have power. If you vote another way, the polls get taken back to Kampala. We have seen that happen. I think we need to do a lot more for this country. That will do for today's big story. Many thanks for joining us. Coming up in a bit is Everyday Life. <laughs>